Welcome to the Clubhouse. My name is Alice and I'm so glad that you could join us. This video is part two of a book binding series that we've put together. So if you missed the first one, maybe you should start over there. There's a link in the description below. I'll wait, seriously. I don't want you to get lost. So go learn all that real quick. Did they go? Okay, good. Let's talk about them. JK y'all, I would never talk about you when you leave the room. Really, I wouldn't. I mean, unless you like Brussels sprouts. <clears throat> okay, great. I see that they're back. That was a pretty fun video, right? All right, let's get into it. So now that you're all chat booked up and ready for the next stage, welcome to bookmaking part two. Here in our Summer Avenue Clubhouse, we have some super fun specialized tools for making lots of different stuff. But a lot of my favorites are geared towards paper craft and bookmaking. I love this book press that we found in a junk store in Springdale. Shout out to NWA. That's Northwest Arkansas. Not the world famous rap pioneers, although shout out to them too. Love you, Cube. I was so excited to find a working book press in that store, and you can probably imagine my delight after having browsed all the aisles that they actually had two for sale. I ended up putting the first one back because this one had such lovely, although worn, hand-painted detail work. Anyway, I certainly do get a lot of delight out of these special tools, and here's a short clip we made today to prove it. That honey right there is our guillotine. We helped our friends at Small Fires Press pick up a 36 inch guillotine and for compensation, they gifted us their old one. To quote the Reverend Mr. Green, love and happiness. Some of the other fun bookmaking tools we have collected include this corner rounder, which allows us to put in different dies, right here, for different radii, and these super fun perforators. They feel so good when you roll them on your skin. What? You just got to be careful not to push too hard or you'll look like Sally from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Well, when I'm putting together sketchbooks, one thing I really enjoy is creating a fancy cover. Now there's nothing wrong with using a simple piece of cardstock, but I love to use fancy paper and glue to create collage covers. Check out these samples I whipped up since episode one. This one made with some wrapping paper on cardstock. Anybody else see wrapping paper? Just me? Am I just the nut? <laughs> I have this one. I used some of my plant pounding paper. Let me show you that. Isn't that a pretty one? So it's grass. And some fun little details I added there. And we've got this one. That's another fun thing I love to do. And in there, that's my fancy handmade marbled paper. Cool. Also another video. So I have some pretty handmade papers I've collected, so I'm going to show you how to glue them together. This is also a good trick if you'd like a heavier cup cover, or maybe you don't have cardstock at all, you can glue pieces of paper together. You can make a great cover from cereal boxes covered in paper. So we're going to use rubber cement. And a quick PSA about rubber cement. I'm sure you're all familiar with this stuff from grade school. It smells great. It makes the best fake boogers and it comes in colorful tins with super fun designs. But how many of you think it's crappy glue? Well, you're not alone there. I sure did. But as it turns out, I've been using it wrong this whole time. Now check this out, y'all. You're going to brush some rubber cement on both pieces of paper that you're gluing together. And here's the secret to rubber cement. If you want a movable bond, you're going to stick your paper together while it's wet. If you want a permanent bond, which we do, you'll want to let them dry and then stick them together. Drying can take about four to 10 minutes, depending on the paper you're using. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply my glue. You don't want it super gloopy but you do want to make sure that you coat especially those edges. This is going to be the exterior of my book, so I want to make sure that it's going to hold up. Oh, thank you. We're going to get that everywhere. Now there's a lot of different kinds of glue you can use for this task, but I really like Thank you, Michael. 
I really like rubber cement for this. It's archival. It's easy to acquire. I actually got this at the Kroger today. So here I have for my ginger snaps box, I have a little bit of chipboard. So this is going to be a nice heavy cover. And I'm going to go ahead and mush that glue everywhere. Already you can see, maybe, you can see that it's starting to dry. So we're going to wait until that's just tacky for that permanent bond. Again, I want to make sure that even if I mess up a little bit in the center, I really want to make sure that I get those edges nice and coated so that this sticks together really great. So we, while we wait a sec for those to dry, um, I have some other samples that I did earlier that are super fun. So this one, I had a bunch of cool origami papers that were all about three by three inches, and I cut them up thinking about um, quilting squares. So I covered my awesome red piece of cardstock with some glue, and then I did each one of these individually, let them dry and laid them out. I think that one's really fun. I have this guy, which I'm pretty excited about. This is my love and lips sketchbook. So I haven't finished binding it yet, but I've cut some holes out of my cardboard, which I'm gonna show you next. But this again was some wrapping paper. Anybody else out there a total nut and save wrapping paper? Um, I do. <laughs> so it's super thin. So I actually glued that with my rubber cement onto a nice piece of white paper to make it a little bit thicker. So these are pretty close to being dry. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and go for it. Now, you want this to be completely, this one looks great. This one looks real good. It's almost completely dry. This one is mostly dry. Um, so because we're making a permanent bond here, y'all, you're gonna want to put this down exactly right the first time. You're not gonna be able to pull it up and reposition. So now the big question is, which side is gonna go on the inside? Fun handmade paper? which is very awesome, made in India with these cool gold ties, or are we gonna put that ginger snaps for our outside cover? We'll have to see, I'm not sure. All right, so that's what we in the business call super strong. What a bond. Now, when you're folding your covers with this thicker material, you are gonna to want to be careful um, that you use your straight edge as we talked about in that first video. You're going to want to be careful as you pull this to that nice crease and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to pull this up to start my crease and now sometimes you might see your paper might bend funny. So once I get this folded you really want to come back with your bone folder and not only are you going to work this outside crease to make sure it's nice and tidy, but you're gonna to wanna to open it up and see what's happening on the inside and go ahead and crease that as well. Sometimes the thicker material will fold a little strangely, but these bone folders will do a really nice job getting rid of any weird wrinkles that might appear on the inside. So now I have this really awesome cover for another sketchbook. So another thing that I really like to do is cut shapes out of a cardstock cover to re reveal some cool interior paper. This is another really great way to show off fun papers. I especially love it with the marbled paper. I mean, they look like little worlds. It's like a schmoo. It's cool, right? So you can use hole punches to do this if you'd like. So I have some of those, um, but you're limited where you can punch. It will only come so far into your paper. So you're not able to maybe punch everywhere you'd like to. Plus, I really like cutting with my X-Acto tool and I like making weird shapes of my own design rather than just using punches. So to do that, you're going to need um, an X-Acto, trusty X-Acto, and a pencil. 
So let's see, what do we have to cut out? Oh, this guy, we were gonna make a matcher out of this cool paper, which I think looks like Jupiter. So I'll just take my cardstock, figure out where my center is going to be. So this is a little bit longer than my cover will be in the end. You can kind of eyeball that. This will be my center so that you're not drawing through where you're going to stitch. We want to keep that on the front cover. And then I'll just make some kind of, uh, we'll do some circles. So I've got my X-Acto and I'm going to start cutting that. So some a trick if you haven't used an X-Acto before, or maybe it's been a little while, is instead of turning your whole body around to get your curve, go ahead and turn your paper as you're cutting. So I'm going to cut a little bit. I've made a circle. You maybe can't see it because it's dark on dark paper, but I made a little circle and I'm going to cut a little bit and then I'm going to turn a little bit. And I'm going to get a really nice, really nice cutout shape this way. Oops, the pencil's in the way. All right. And then from this point, you can see, oh, that's going to reveal a really fun planet in my cover. And for this one, I'm not going to glue them together. Can you see that? I'm not going to glue these together. This is going to just be my interior page. So like this one, when you flip open your cover, your next page is going to be a beautiful piece of marbled paper to look at. And then it's going to segue into your regular pages. So that's a really fun thing to do. And you can cut out whatever you like. They could be words, they could be shapes, whatever you're feeling. Okay, so I have one more trick to show you. And for this one, you're gonna need a straight edge of some sort. I'm gonna use my metal ruler. Almost lost it under the papers. <laughs> and then you're also gonna need your uh, trusty X-Acto knife again. So we're going to trim the edges of our book square. Now, when we made our chat books in lesson one, I just want to show you this again to remind you, we cut our cover just a little bit larger than our regular pieces of paper. And the reason we did that is because these interior pages, no matter how pre precise you are when you fold and you cut, they are still not going to make a square edge. I'm trying to find the best angle to show you all that. So there's a little bit, your interior pages are going to poke out a little bit more than your exterior pages. So in this, in this situation, we left that cover long because it just hides it, right? But what if you want that professional look of the squared edge, right? That makes it look like a real book, right, y'all? All right. So this does take a bit of patience. Let's see, which one do we want to do? I'm going to do this cute little pencil book. So what you do, you lay your book down. You're going to take your straight edge. You're going to hold that firmly in place. Now here's the trick. You want to make sure that you don't move this ruler while you're working. So using really firm pressure with your fingers, and then you're going to take your X-Acto knife, and you're going to hold the blade so it's running right along the edge of the ruler straight up and down that blade and right against the ruler you're going to cut repeatedly until you get all the way through this will take several cuts depending on how thick your book is oh i wiggled so let's try and line that up Oh, all the way through. And now I have a wonderful, clean cut edge. Do you see how different that looks? It's the little things, y'all, that make all the difference. Oh, how I do love it when a plan comes together. 
If you've planned it all right and taken your time, counted the pages, and held your pinky up while the rubber cement dried, then you just may have the sketchbook of your dreams. Or journal. Nothing against journals. I just haven't kept one since my brother Chuck took mine to his third grade show and tell. That about does it. Now we've made a chat book and you've got some pretty sweet techniques for making them just a little bit fancy. As we learn more techniques in the next videos in our bookmaking series, you'll be able to mix and match loads of these ideas to make, dun dun dun, drum roll please, the ultimate sketchbook or journal. Right, well, thank you so much for watching. This is Alice signing off from our Summer Avenue Clubhouse. See you soon.